Right, welcome to Ask GMBN this week. We've got loads of techie questions, so I've got Doddy in, the tech expert, to help me out. Hope you're ready for this, Doddy. Yep, certainly am. Uh, some skills ones as well, so a bit of a variety this week. Nice. Right, let's kick it off with one from Joe O'Carroll. It's actually directed towards you, Doddy. Uh, I keep seeing these videos on Instagram of coloured chain lube or wax that you apply from a sponge. Uh, have you seen these? I have. have All those these? GCN guys love that stuff, don't they? Do they? Yeah. It looks kind of hipster, doesn't it? You get like rainbow coloured chains and yeah. stuff. Yeah. So what do you reckon? I don't know. There's... I guess it depends on the conditions you're riding because wax chains are supposed to be quite friction free. Yeah. And applying them is obviously sounds quite cool, but I know the conditions I normally ride in. And my chain's always filthy at the end of a ride. I'm, I think so, that's going to turn black, isn't it? As soon as yeah. you ride in mud uh, or you know a couple of rides, I think that's going to turn black and horrible. I think if you're lucky enough to have a, like, a hot, dusty climate, it looks pretty trick. Yeah, it does, like, actually. I think it'd be cool, but um, um, keen to get some, actually, to try it and see. So, Test it, jury's it? out. Yeah, I'm a moment. bit sensitive with my chain lube. I like dry lube all year round. Don't I'm, like wet I'm the same, actually. Yeah. yeah, wets get too gunky, Yeah, I think. I like it yeah. to look nice and clean. Yeah. Right, uh, Aiden ARW. Uh, Hi, Dolly. Can you recommend a decent bike rack for a VW estate car? I've got one of those. Yeah. Uh, getting fed up putting a muddy bike in the back of my car. Yeah, I feel your pain there. Um, well, you've got a roof rack on yours, haven't you? Yeah, so, so. The, loads of options. I've got those Tula roof guards, uh, the roof racks and the bike racks, Yeah. which I, I do find is good. But the problem is, instead of getting the inside of your car dirty, you now get the top of your car and the back so, dirty. I've always got paranoia about roof racks myself. Yeah. I know you've never had any issues with yours, but I've, well, I've been able to see them through the window. I've seen, I know people who've driven into those low barriers oh. with their bikes on. And you Expensive. know what? I've heard of it writing off cars because they're, oh, really? they're so attached. Yeah, that it can just break the bike. It can like rip the top of the car as well. Yeah. So I'm super sensitive about that. I do find it's good. I think it's worth cleaning your bike before you put it back on because it can scratch your down tube as well. That's a good shout. But I do yeah. like it. It's very handy because it I mean, stays on there permanently. I guess for the back um, two days, you say they do loads of great racks. Yeah. Saris do some really cool looking ones. Yeah. Um, I'd say I would go for a towable rack. The like if you've gone on the back, but I wouldn't want a tow ball. I'd have to get a removable tow ball. Yes, I'm funny about that. I don't like having them on there. They, they look, look a bit look, unless you've got the right car for it. They look like you turn a caravan for the yeah. rest of the time. Also, say those bike racks, you've got to put them on and off. So I don't always know that I'm going to pick a bike up or whatever, yeah. put it on in the car, so my roof rack is on permanently. Yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. Do so you find that affects your uh, fuel economy? It does at actually? All? Yeah, it does. Definitely a few MPGs worse for having the roof rack on. What if it's the same with a boot rack? I'd hope it's a little bit You'd better. You'd think it'd be better in theory, wouldn't yeah. you? Uh, but yeah, I'd go for a towable mounted rack and two lay do one specifically for mountain bikes that have got longer wheelbase and they'll cope with fat bikes yeah. as well. So they're going to be pretty solid. You can put downhill bikes on there. Um, have a look on screen. There's one right there. Uh, actually, going back to a different type of rack, in Iceland, the guy on top of his Land Rover had this rack. Oh, I don't know who it was made by, but yeah. it just, it put, it's like a ratchet system onto the tyres, onto the wheels. Oh, nice. So there's no contact with the bike at all other than the tyres. That was really yeah. good. I don't know the manufacturer, I'm afraid. I know in Canada, they have like an upright ones, don't they? Yep. You see them, they oh, rack them all up. Yeah, and they're pretty good, but I'm not sure you can get them over here. Well, I've not seen them, anyway. I haven't seen them, no. No, but they'd be quite good. Right, time for a quick fact check. That bike rack that I was talking about, the Magna, our guide in Iceland had on top of his Land Rover, is made by 1UP. It's an American brand, so check them out. Right, one more from John Bishop. He's got a 2018 Cube Reaction Hardtail 29er. Would like some advice on the best tire pressures for aggressive trail or downhill riding. P.S. totally addicted to the channel. Good John. I think that's got to vary on you as a rider, the tyres you've got and where you ride. Yeah. And you know, I think no one person runs the same pressures. Definitely I true. Think. I would say, personally for me, if I was on a 29 hard tower trying to ride aggressive trail and downhill, mm. I'd want them pretty hard. 20 yeah. 30. Doesn't yeah. suit everyone. I know that depends how sort of gnarly your tyre is. If it's a single ply cross country tyre, definitely would run it fairly hard. Definitely running the risk, aren't you, with a with a softer tyre when it's thin. Yep. Um, what pressures you sort of normally run? I've been going down recently yeah. to sort of mid 20s to higher, to, no, 24th, 28th. However, yeah. racing enduro at the weekend or a couple of weekends ago, I went right back up to my old 28, 30 psi. Yeah. Because it was so rocky. And you ride in tyres, a good chance you can whack in something. Oh, good, gotcha. yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah. It's a different style of riding when you're racing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah so. I I'm, but I'm, I'm about 24 at the front and about 28 on the back. Yeah, definitely low Pretty in the good front. For, um, but yeah, you need to kind of try it and find out what works best for you, really, to be honest. Uh, we've got a whole video dedicated to tyre pressure, so check it out. There's quite a few things that will influence how you set your tyre pressure, such as the type of bike you're putting your tyres on, the type of tyres you've got 
the conditions you're riding in, and also your skill level should all determine how hard you have your tires. Uh, Jin ZX. Uh, hey, loving the content. Was wondering if the change in the frame size of the bike, so if you outgrow it to a bigger one, requires any other changes to the bike. Um, yes, so potentially a steerer tube for your fork, depending on how long the front of the frame is. Yeah. Uh, that's generally less of a concern, I think. Um, your seat tube diameter might be different, so you might need a new seat post, a bottom bracket, and potentially a rear wheel or axle conversion. If you're, say, if you're going from the same frame to a larger frame, the sum of those you might get away with. Head tube might be the one that yeah. catches you out. Yeah. Potentially a different length seat post. Yeah, or, or diameter. Yeah, yeah, so it does does vary. You can luck out and just do like for like swap. Yeah, you probably have gear. to check the specs when you're against the new one to yeah. see just how much you're gonna have to buy. Yeah, and, and you can you can actually buy buy those specs as well if you if you really want to. Cool. Uh, Regan Doig. Hey guys, can I have more than one master link on my chain at once? So the split links. Um, I don't know what the official line is. On this. <laughs> They'd probably say no, but I've done this many times and it's been absolutely fine. Um, yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. I think the weakest link in the chain is your problem, and a split link won't be one when it's connected correctly. I do wonder. I don't. I rarely snap a chain, to be honest. I can't remember like, the last time I snapped one. And but the last time I did it, it probably wasn't from the split link anyway. It's probably no, just from somewhere else. Me yeah. being a heavy is and just pedaling at the wrong time and snapping it wherever it is. Here's an idea. Why don't we build a chain out of split links? Well, we did joke about it because <laughs> uh, the Enduro World Series, a guy snapped his chain mid uh, stage, didn't yeah. stop and get it, got to the bottom and I was like, well, what am I going to do? He's in the middle of nowhere and uh, everyone, he was asking around if anyone had a chain. I was like, no, I've got a split link. And someone yeah. else said, I've got a split link. I was like, oh, we could probably just, <laughs> just need to get a little bits in the middle. Yeah, I, I don't see why it wouldn't work. I guess it might not be as durable because of the fact that a chain has some sort of flex built into it. Yeah. Whereas they're going to be limited in the amount of flex they have. It's going to be expensive. Yeah, very expensive. <laughs> but um, I think it'd be fine. Just make sure you're always checking your chain if it's been split and rejoined. Yep. Basically. Well, I never trust them to buy mm. once I've broken one. But anyway, here's three hacks to fix a broken chain. Another way to fix your chain on the side of a trail is by using a power link or a master link. Now, these are brilliant. They're becoming quite popular and are quite compatible with a number of chains out there. So be sure to get one that is suitable for your drivetrain. Okay, next up is from Dominic Alfiano. Is it safe to ride with a dented rim? Uh, um, I would say yes. Most of the time, depends how bad it is. I did dent one recently that actually you could see the bead of the tire. So yeah. why in that case, I'll say no, because there's a good chance that I could pop off. Yeah. But I just got the old adjustable spanner out. Give it a little tweak. And it was all right. Yeah, I've done it many a time myself. Uh, one thing you might notice if you're running tubeless is you might break that seal. Yeah. You find it hard to re reseal that. That was my problem, but I bent it back and it worked fine. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah. All right, next up from CJ Trombone. Howdy, is it possible to outride your bike? I've got an entry level cross country bike, had brake issues each week for the past few weeks, as well as a bunch of other issues. Uh, what would you say? I would say kind of, but you could always adapt that bike, like get some, you know, the brakes might not be up to the job. They yeah. might be riding downhill on a small rotor and then getting too hot. I think generally bikes tend to outride you as a rider. Yeah. They're so capable of what they can do now, but perhaps at the entry level end, Maybe your skills are developing fast enough that yeah. your bike can't keep up. So yeah, potentially. You can, like I said, you can upgrade tires, you can upgrade brakes, things like that, so you mm. can sort of make that bike up to your level a bit more. Yeah, and you can also do little hacks as well to like improve your braking power just by getting bigger rotors, for example. Yeah. So using the same brakes, you'll still get more power from them. Yeah, depends what the brake issue is, I suppose. Of course, yeah. Can be uh, next up from Juan South. Uh, hi guys, I'm struggling to get any better in my line choice, which I think is, my, is related to my lack of looking forward on the trail, um, which I find quite difficult. Yeah. Which is the best way to practice line choice without stopping on every part of the trail? I mean, in a more fluid way. Yeah, I've talked about that a few times about stopping and trying things over and over. Mm. For me, I definitely that worked when I was a youngster. I used to just go and push up trails and ride back down. So you'd ride the same, but over and over. Yeah, it doesn't work for everyone. You might be going for a, a ride with other people and you don't want to be stopping time. So it's just a case of really concentrating on trying to link things together a bit better and it definitely happens with me where if I don't ride enough my eyes drop down here and they need to be up there so just really try and think about it all the time trying to link things together like corners and it is a case of 
you know, trial and error, trying different lines all the time, and your sort of your instinct for pick, picking a better line will get better, I think. Yeah, it's just interesting to say about the instinct thing. So you definitely do pick that up in time. I watched yeah. a cool little POV video of a guy following Greg Minar. Yeah. And this guy was nowhere near as good as Greg. Greg was riding it blind, but the guy rode pretty much twice the fast he would normally ride. Right, just yeah. Just following Greg. And it was interesting Absolutely. seeing how Greg was preempting like yep. blind rises and things. I know Stan Hillers will have spent so much time really concentrating on that. That is why they're probably so good at it. Really yeah. Thinking about it all the time. All right, now it's time for quick fire, and actually the list we've got are pretty much all aimed about your EWS race. Cool. So it is quite cool. So first up from Ain't Berry, are you going to start wearing a back protector full time on a Rocky Trails, Neil? I've been looking at getting one. Um, I've never really liked running them, but actually it was fine. I forgot about it straight away, mm. and I, that little crash I had in practice actually fell probably like five foot flat onto my back on rocks, and my elbow Ooh. still hurts now. So I was really the back down was good. Back was actually fine. So yes, I might do. Uh, Brian Holm, do you regret going with flat pedals or does that still in hindsight feel like the right choice? I feel like it was the right choice because I was a bit loose in parts and I was definitely foot off for a lot of those really those really deep, dusty switchback corners. Yeah. So for me, I think it was right. Uh, Mark Kozbowski, um, at 124 we can see the bottom of your shoe. You have exactly no tread on that shoe and you're riding flats. What the F? Oh, it's supposed to be like that. <laughs> so the new North Waves, what are they called? Yeah, Clam. Clam. Yeah. They've got like a lower profile tread where you would put your pedal. Yep. Um, just the idea is so you don't sort of get stuck in one spot, you can shuffle them around a little bit. Uh, I'm surprised how well it really worked. We've seen it before on things like the 510 Freerider Contacts. Were they That's called? right, yeah, yeah, Contacts. Didn't yeah. like them to be honest. Yeah. However, these, they were too slick though. Yeah, I they were completely yeah. slick, weren't they? This, I actually don't know. As soon as you're stood up on the pedal, it doesn't feel any different than a normal uh, shoe. So, yeah, I think it's good. good and stuff. finally, from Noah Carter, uh, have you ever played bike polo? If you haven't, you should. Never. I'm not sure. <laughs> Is that the one? I've seen bike football. Is yeah. that a different thing? Bike polo, um, boy, literally like... You hold the stick and you whack yeah. it like the... I think that sounds like almost like a game of bike. It sounds stupid to yeah, me. Yeah. Should, we, should we try it or not? Yeah, let us know in those comments mm. and we'll have a go if you think we should. I'm not convinced. Anyway, time to for correct me if I'm wrong. So this is Tim on his Mondraker June Carbon R. Uh, and he is asking if he's, if he's doing this right. So he's jumping his double. You can definitely see the next one. He doesn't do right. Because <laughs> he has a crash. <laughs> so he's saying that he thinks he's relying on speed quite a lot. It does look like he's going mega fast. Pretty fast. It looked like you actually... Cause it's kind of a flat long double yeah you kind of don't drop in for landing you almost fly past it and then land so i would say slow mm. down a bit work on that bunny hop technique we always talk about but just trying to make height that jump probably isn't going to be the easiest to do it because it is quite a flat takeoff so maybe find a shorter taller jump i would say yeah that sounds good so uh, the second jump i would say don't fall yeah. off I see. That looked like at the last minute so I didn't want to do it. Yeah, <laughs> we've all done it. Uh, nice one, good video though. Just uh, yeah, just try and slow it down a bit I'd say. Keep sending your videos in, using our uploader of course. You can pick your bit in there, so if you want to correct me if I'm wrong, send in your bike vaults for the dirt shed. Super easy, get involved, love seeing it. Keep sending in your questions or leaving them down below this video in the comments. We look through them and we'll try and help you out next week. Uh, if you want to see my video racing the Enduro World Series, click over here for that one. And if you want to know everything about the essentials of adjusting your gears, click right down there. Give us a thumbs up and hit the